everybody. Hi. Can I take a picture? Yeah. Hello. Can you take one picture? Well, congratulations. You are all here. <laughs> we had a colorful delegation from Bangladesh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Okay. Well, we started some discussion yesterday. We'll continue today that the, about the three zeros. I hope you remember it. That uh, <coughs> zero poverty, zero um, unemployment, and zero net carbon emission. And to, uh, as a prelude to that, I was saying, you have a choice. You can um, get into the world that already built, or you can build a world yourself. Uh, it's a choice. And as a creative person, as someone who wants to express his or her creative power, uh, naturally will choose to the option of creating a world in the imagination that he or she could have. And that's the kind of challenge all young people have. There is, an, there is a chance, good chance, that you can build your own world if you want to. So I would see that everybody kind of give it a try, give it a try, because this is a time to make it happen, particularly because the world that we have created got into a lot of troubles, which we can try to fix it. We talk about it, how to fix this, how to fix that. Sometimes it's better to build something new rather than try to fix something, which is too complicated. So this is our chance to make it a new world of the way we want. The moment you say we want or I want, you have to imagine it. Everything starts with imagination. If you cannot imagine, you cannot design. So use your creative power to imagine a world that you would like to have for yourself and everybody else. That's the world that everybody should say, my God, this is a fantastic world. When you imagine, one interesting thing is, there is no limit. It doesn't cost you anything to imagine. That's the beauty of it. Let it go. Let your mind go as far as they want. It's a limitless thing. So that's another power, that I can do things in my imagination whatever I want, without any boundary, without any limit. Wilder the imagination is, better it is. Then the imagination has more value that yes, you imagine something. So don't try to be realistic. It's funny, everybody wants you to be realistic. And here I'm saying, don't be realistic. Let your imagination go a while and create the world that you want to have. List them what you want in that world. Number one, this is what I want in that world. Number two, this is what I want in that world. Put them all together and see how it fits in. You know, you are all, we, all of us are familiar with science fiction, aren't we? You all watch science fiction movies, science fiction television series, and we are fond of the, all those characters and the kind of gadgets they have. Where does it come from? Imagination. It doesn't exist. This is not realistic. It's just the imagination. Wilder the imagination on this, more we get glued to the screen to see how, how it's how. This is, isn't that something? And you watch every episode of the series. Don't want to miss anything. Why? Because it's wild. It wasn't it? Wouldn't it be great if we had that? moving from one galaxy to another galaxy, doing all kinds of things. You know what? Because we have science fiction, it's not new, it's old stuff, science fiction. At one time, science fiction was about to go to the moon. How do we go to the moon? All kinds of funny things they can imagine and wrote a book about it, how to get to the moon. It's so far-flung idea. People laughed at it, how crazy a person can get even to think about going to the moon. 
with many, many different ways they tried out in the imagination, in the fiction. And what happened ultimately? Technology followed the fiction and made it happen. And human being landed on the moon. It's no longer funny, no longer strange. If you say, now if you tell anybody that yes, we can land on the moon, oh, this is nothing. We should go someplace else. Because it's so routine now. People, all they're planning to do something, it's not about moon, it's not about this. We want to go to way, way out. Why? Because we got confidence that yes, our, our imagination can be achieved in reality. So fiction led us to follow the path. So the fiction is very important. Imagination is very important. So science fiction leads the world of technology and science. And I always regret there is no social fiction. Can't we write social fictions? All the way we would be living together, how we do this, fiction. People will, ah, this is crazy. The more we'll write those fictions, the more we'll make those fictions, you know what? Like moon landing, we'll end up with those societies. You have to imagine something to create something. If you don't imagine, you cannot create. So it's a very important thing to imagine. So when I say build your own world, start with imagination. What kind of world that would be? If you imagine that world, each one of you, if you imagine that world, today I can guarantee you it will happen. But if you don't imagine, it will not happen. Imagination leads the way. So that's the power of imagination. And you are full of that power. Make use of it. Just by imagination, you will take us in that direction. If you don't imagine what happens, we drift. Every day is a new question. Every day we drift a little, way, a little bit this way because we don't have a destination. Imagination defines a destination. It's very important to do that. What is our destination? What is your destination? And sometimes you can express it by saying, what is the purpose of my life? What, is that? what am I here for? I have to answer that question. Unfortunately, our education system doesn't address that issue. They let you learn everything about science, about technology, about history, about geology, whatever you want. But they don't let us Ask the fundamental question about myself. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? What is the purpose of my life? I hope in your own way, you will ask yourself the question and answer your question your way. If you have done that, your life will start taking a shape. Imagination and a purpose. Put together, becomes a power. You are not saying, I'm so small. Who am I to change the whole world? I can easily tell you, not only as a group, as a young generation, as a whole, you can change the world. You, one individual among yourself, just one individual can change the whole world. That's the power you have. You can't feel it this way because you still don't know which one become the really mind-boggling idea which will change the world. It all needs an idea, that's all. And I can say it because I got involved with something which I thought, I thought at the beginning is a silly thing, little things, but it became big without my realizing it. First of all, microcredit. You remember microcredit? I'm sure you heard about it. Tiny, tiny loans given to poor women. Who ever thought it has any value, it has any meaning to anybody? Now it's a global thing. I'm sure you come from many, many different countries. Every one of your countries have microcredit programs, someplace, somewhere. It is see, it moved from one place to another because people needed it. I didn't have to go and advertise it, push it, no. 
people needed it. You did something which others needed. They picked it up. So today, that tiny thing that we did, the one that the story, as we tell, that it all started with $27 out of my own pocket. Just lending money so that people don't have to go to the loan sharks. And that $27 got into millions, got into billions of dollars and so on and so forth. It became global. So it goes, who knows? What about that little idea that you have, have its own power to change everything. You don't have to go to books about it. The life is right there. Life is more powerful than the book. You see a problem, I'm sure you have all the understanding or at least familiar, familiarization of the problems that the world faces. List them. Make a list of the problems. Number one problem, number two problem, number three problem, whatever it is. And they say, and then you decide, maybe I should try to see, do something about this problem. Take a small piece of that problem, so small, that you will laugh at it. It's nothing. I can do it anytime. You know, when we talk about problems, they come in big mega shape, mega size. And when you see it in mega size, you feel small. It's giant of a problem. I'm a tiny little guy. What can I do? So one way to transform it, take a tiny, tiny piece of one of those problems. So that you see so tiny, you can put it in your palm and look at it and feel sorry for that. <laughs> they say, I'm going to fix you. Because you have more power than this tiny little problem. When you say unemployment, one of the three zeros is unemployment. Unemployment is a big issue. Every country has unemployment. And some countries have a major issue. Particularly poor countries, have almost every young kid has no prospect of finding a real job. You go to Europe, many children are out of, many young people are out of jobs. Youth unemployment, big. 30% youth unemployment. 30% of the young people can't find a job. 40% unemployment, yes, many countries with 40%, 50%, 60% youth unemployment. That's big. But if we say, all right, can I come up with an idea to take five unemployed young people out of unemployment? Five, or two, or three, doesn't matter. Is it, does it sound like a big problem? No, it's not a rocket science. If you spend 15 minutes of your time, you can come up with the idea how to take five unemployed young people out of unemployment. Some of them will be crazy ideas, don't matter, doesn't matter. Try it out, someone say, ah, this is real, this can be done. It doesn't cost much, but easily can be done. What do you do? You can create jobs for them, you can create a business, small business, tiny little business which kind of accommodate these five young people inside of the business so that they have decent work for them. And you make money out of this. And in our language, you'll say, we'll let, try to make it a social business. So this is not, I'm not creating the business to make money for myself. I'm creating the business to solve the problem of these five young people. So that it runs by itself and it returns the money that I put into it and it still runs all the future profit will be plowed back into it and it can grow. Try it out. What kind of business that would be? It will be a social business for you to employ five young people into a business which follows that. It can be done. Or you can come up with an idea how to make them into entrepreneurs. So each one will become a business person. Sounds very difficult. How does it, how does one do it? It doesn't sound strange to me because looking back what I see, when I started the microcredit program, tiny loans, when this woman, an illiterate village woman from Bangladesh who never touched money in her life, now we're saying you can think about something 
to take this money and use it so that you can generate an income for you? That's all the question. She said, oh, I never did anything. But it's okay. Think about it. You see what your friends are doing. If your friends are doing something which can encourage you to think your own, come back to us. We'll come back to you. And that's how it happened. They start to thinking of something they can do where we'll bring the money back to them. So that is the beginning of microcredit. That's the beginning of Grameen Bank. That's the beginning of all whole global movement. Why? Because we transformed that unemployed village woman into an entrepreneur. She became an entrepreneur with $20, $30, $40, $100. That's about it. So it's not a big deal. People have creative power inside of them. Unlimited creative power. Each one of you have. That village woman has the same thing. They may be poor. They may be illiterate. But definitely they are not stupid. So sometimes we get confused. Illiterate means... <laughs> That's where we go wrong. We got kind of mixed up. Illiterate means stupid. It's not. It's a very smart person. The fact that he or she is alive, he or she can take care of himself or herself in a day-to-day -day way, shows enormous amount of creativity. Enormous amount of stay power. Simply we are not opening the door for her. Whole society closed all the doors for her. And we did a small door opening, just opening a door for lending money. That's all. And she changed everything else. Today, she owns the bank itself. All the borrowers of Grameen Bank are the owners of Grameen Bank. And you met two of these young people here. As uh, Lamia was introducing, she be he belongs to Grameen Bank family. He belongs. What she meant, they are the children of one of those borrowers. From illiterate parents, from the village, she, they grew up within that Grameen family. Grameen Bank gave her a loan to go to school, to go to college, go to university, get the degree. So you have, now if you take this girl from here and put it her back into the village with her mother, they will look the same. Mother and the daughter, as usual, look same. One is younger, and others have a kind of marks of age and hard life on her face. This young girl doesn't have that. And you ask this girl, what do you do? She said, I'm doing my master's degree in Asian University of Women. Or I'm becoming a PhD. What does she, her mother does? She's illiterate. She never went to school. She had a hard life. She took $30 loan in her life and started doing things, and gradually the daughter was born, she was sent to school, as Grameen Bank always insists, every child must be in school, and they did all the help. Today, entire generation comes out that like that, with education. So you, naturally, you should be asking the question, could her mother be a PhD too? What is the answer? Of course, yes. Of course she could have been a PhD. Of course she could have been a doctor, like her daughter. Then why didn't she do that? That's your question. What's wrong? Is there something wrong with her mother? No, nothing wrong. Very hardworking, very sharp woman. What's wrong? Nothing wrong in her. The world she faces is wrong. System she faces is wrong. Never, nobody gave her a chance to go to school, even to learn the alphabets. Her daughter got the chance. Why? Because Grameen Bank came into their life. They opened the door. You must go to school. They persuaded the parents, send her to school. We'll make sure she continues as long as she can do it. She did it. Today, she is in the one young world, making speeches. The same family. Family didn't change. But opportunities make all the difference. So that's the door opener we're talking about. 
So if this woman, illiterate woman, can become an entrepreneur, what's wrong with the son? What's wrong with the daughter? Then they have to go for a job. That's why I tell them, all the young people like you saw here, always tell yourself that I'm not a job seeker, I'm a job creator. Suddenly everything changed for you. I tell the young people from Bangladesh, like her, like all the others, who are coming from Grameen family, when they're looking for job with job applications, asking for me to recommend them for some jobs, I said, I'm not going to do that. Why are you looking for jobs? What's wrong with you? I tell them your education system has destroyed you completely. They got you something drilled into your mind that you have to look for a job made you small. You are a huge human being. And suddenly, <laughs> they ask you to do a tiny little per person asking for a favor, asking for a job. And when you get a job, where do you start? You start at the bottom. And what happens to your creativity is of no use to them. Your tiny little boss will tell you what to do. <laughs> That's the biggest laugh I ever heard on this one. <laughs> True. When you start at the bottom, this is what happens. And that tiny little boss will shape you, will sculpture you into the ideas that he has. It's not you anymore. When you come out of it, you are a tiny little robot, piece of little robots. You gave up all your creativity. Why should I submit myself to that? I'm created as a creative human being. I don't want to give up my me as a person. And also, my history says I'm an entrepreneur. When I was in the cave a million years back, we're all in the caves. That's where we came from. When we're in the caves, we are not sending our job applications from cave number five to cave number 10. <laughs> did we? We didn't. What did we do? We became hunters. We became gatherers. We protected ourselves. That's in our DNA. We are problem solvers. You take this huge problem solver, to do some tiny little things, sell this stuff, sell this lotions, like this, something like that. Why should we? We are made for big things, but the society made us do little things. That's why society is wrong. That's why we have to create a world where we can be ourselves. Build the world that we want, <laughs> every one of us. Always remember, you are the biggest creation on earth. Nobody can contest that. Why the biggest creation in the world do some silly job? It makes no sense, absolutely. Now you ask a young person, European person in Asia or Africa, wherever, what are you doing? No, I don't do anything. Why? Because I'm jobless, I don't have work. I'm unemployed. I said, if you create your own world, the one that you in imagination, if that question in the classroom of those, that world, somebody says, you know, in 2016, a lot of young people were unemployed in the world. The other, guys, other kid says, what is it? What is unemployment? Oh, meaning that he didn't do any work. Why didn't he do any work? Was he sick? He was not sick, he was healthy. If it is healthy, why is he sitting around? The whole class get very puzzled. They cannot understand what is unemployment. Today we take it for granted, we are unemployed, we have nothing to do. There's no reason why any human being should be, should be, should be sitting idle. If we sit idle in our caves, go back, what would happen to us? We'll starve to death. There's no option. 
Now we do it very easily. I'm up. I have no. I don't have to lift my fingers. So, I, as a human being, we enjoy lifting our fingers. We enjoy sweating for our purpose. What I want to do. That's what it is. So, if you take it in our consciousness that this shouldn't be, unemployment is a sickness of the society. It shouldn't exist. We should eliminate that. We can all be entrepreneurs, make a world completely different. So that's why the three zeros come. One, I didn't explain much. Poverty. I was I was explaining the woman in the village. I said poverty is like a bonsai tree. You see the bonsai little thing. Everybody knows that. Where does this bonsai come? We take the seed of a beautiful tall tree and put it in a flower pot and let it grow. Does it become as tall as the tree that we saw in the forest? No. What's wrong with this seed? Why didn't it grow as tall as the one we saw? Because we didn't give it a space. We gave only a flower pot to grow. So the flower pot could not support the tree to grow tall. Nothing wrong with the seed. But something terribly wrong with the space we gave that seed. Poor people are bonsai people. There's nothing wrong with the seed. They're same human seed that we all have. The society never gave them the space so that they can grow as tall as anybody else. They can contribute to the world, create the world they all, we all want. They could be as efficient, as creative as anybody in the world. But we didn't give them a chance. That's the chance we are talking about. What is that missing chance that we have to do? That's the space that you have to create in that new world that you see no poor, no unemployed, no net carbon emission. So all can be done. And I was mentioning quickly, what are the powers which will make it happen? And I put number one, the young people, fresh mind. Their minds still are not tainted by the, what is called conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom is the most unwise thing you will ever see. Don't go through that route. Your wisdom is the much better wisdom than anybody else had. <laughs> stay with your ideas, stay with your mind, stay with your eyes. Don't look at things through the eyes of somebody else. Then you are done, finish. You always keep your eyes intact. Your university education, everybody will try to change your eyes. Protect yourself. Because otherwise you'll be sold into that other world that has planted eyes for other people. Keep your mind fresh. Because everybody is trying to make the mind completely done, finished, sealed. You can't open it anymore. By the time you go to the job, by the time you start under those tiny bosses, your mind will be sealed. You will start thinking like everybody else in the company. And that's the end of you. We don't want to see an end like that. So create the world that you remain fresh ever, completely ever since. And nobody has to escape from that. That's the challenge that we will have. And we, second one, we talk technology. Just a fantastic thing that's happening as a technology. What is impossible today, tomorrow it becomes possible. Very simple thing. L make a list of all the impossible things that you see around you. And let it go for 10 years, 15 years, you open it up. What are the impossible things we talked about in our discussion? You laugh at those things. These are not only possible, it's a routine thing, it's a silly thing, we, we never thought about it, it happened, now it's all there. That's the speed in which impossibles keep on becoming possibles. Then what is your role? Your role is before anybody else make the impossible possible, you do it yourself. So that push the history further. Don't wait for somebody else to do it. While you are around, why shouldn't you do it? And you can do it. It's not, a, again, art shattering idea that, oh my, how, how am I going to? Just focus on it. Believe that I have the power to do it. All I have to do is to tiny piece of that. 
Don't take the whole thing. Take the tiny piece of it and make it happen. We tell the young people in Bangladesh, like you met, we are, jobs, we are not job seekers, we are job creators. And they say, what do we do now? I said, here is the fund that we created called Social Business Fund. All you have to do, just come up with a business idea, like your mother did. Your mother came with a business idea when gave the money. Now you come up with the business idea and we'll invest in your business. We gave loan to your mother, we do it one degree higher now. We give you equity participation. We become your partner. You run the business. I'm the financing partner. You are the operating partner. You run it, make it successful, and return the money that I gave you. Exactly the same money. Because in social business, we don't want to make money out of you. Our job is to help you get into the orbit so that you can go anywhere you want. Does it look like an art shattering idea? No, very simple idea. So in the beginning, young people were hesitating. Should I, shouldn't I? Once three of them, five of them, 10 of them did it and they got the money, they run the business. I said, hey, how did you do that? I can do better than that. So come up. So now we get hundreds, we get thousands of them and we keep on investing in them. Everybody becomes entrepreneurs. And they tell me, well, not everybody is an entrepreneur. I said, you're telling me not everybody is an entrepreneur. I said, I'm the one going around in the villages talking to women who said, no, 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 I'm not cut out to run businesses. I don't know anything. I said, don't worry about it. You'll learn about it. It's inside of you. We just wait. We just peel off your fears. We peel off the things society has imposed on you so that you discover yourself. And that's why millions and millions of these women became entrepreneurs. Now you're telling me not everybody is entrepreneur? Are we looking for entrepreneur poor people? We're looking for poor people. Every human being is an entrepreneur. We run the same thing in the USA called Grameen America because we are challenged that if what you do in Bangladesh will never work here. We tried, it doesn't work. I said, okay, I'll do it for you. So it started in 2008 in New York City. Jackson Height, many of you are probably familiar. And did beautiful. First branch came out beautiful. Everything is on the dot. Now every city wants to have a Grameen program. <laughs> we have now over 85,000 women as the borrowers of Grameen program. 50,000 of them in New York City. There are eight branches. Women who doesn't even have documents, who cannot prove that she's, she belongs to this country, the USA. But we give them loan. Just because she doesn't have any document, meaning she does, is not a citizen, she doesn't have any papers. But we give them loans. They pay us back. We gave them half a billion dollar already. Every penny is paid back. Ever since we began, the repayment record is 99.6%. Imagine that. <laughs> so whenever, whenever somebody says it's not going to fly, it's not going to work, you make you up your mind, that's the thing you have to do. No option. That's how it does. Because the conventional wisdom, as I said, is the most stupid thing you can ever heard. So why don't you be yourself? Do things in your own way and show that it can be done. They repeatedly said it will never work in the United States. I said, I'll try. That's how it began. So we are now giving all the young, young people instead of un unemployment to become entrepreneurs. That's what we do. So achieving these three zeros is not a big deal if we put our minds into it. And last point I was going to mention, as I did yesterday, I said, when we achieve those three goals, which we do, we must, we have to. Already, this is a global decision, not my decision. Zero poverty is SDG goal number one, if you remember. Zero net carbon emission is a Paris Agreement decision. And uh, Mary Robinson was explaining so vividly about what climate change thing has to be done. It's a global decision. This is nothing new. All I'm saying, you have to do it fast. Don't wait for anybody else. Zero 
unemployment is a new issue because we still people think, oh, no, no, this cannot be done. It can be done. We are continue to do that together and make it happen. That unemployment, a subject which will out of our imagination, out of our discussion, finish. No human being will do that. Then I'm saying we lay the foundation of a new civilization. A civilization which doesn't have any poor people. Everybody is a free person doing their own thing. No unemployment. Everybody is doing their own thing creatively. No carbon emission or anything else. We have to move from this old civilization that we created, which is a cracking up, which is destined for destruction, self-destruction. We have, before it self-destructs itself, we have to create the one that we want together. That's where your role is. And that society will not be based on the greed the way it is created now. We are in a civilization which is based on greed. Greed is not human being. Human being has separate values, values of sharing and caring and be together. So we build a new civilization with human values and be happy with that. Thank you very much. Welcome to that. Thank you very much. We will make it happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're amazing as ever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks.